Hi everybody, Lemony Vengeance here, and today we're going to talk about uh, the Crossbone, which is a piggyback PCB that will allow you to uh, better controller hack your Xbox One controller to work in arcade boards. Specifically today we're going to show you how, or I'm going to show you how to uh, install the Crossbone on an Xbox One pad and mod it with the uh, Aki Shop Customs PS360 Plus board. Um, first, let's talk a little bit about the crossbone. As you can see, here it is. Uh, the crossbone, like I said, is a piggyback solution to make pad hacking the Xbox One pad a much more simple and potentially less destructive process. Uh, it replaces the top board on the Xbox One controller. As you can see, there's two boards here. It replaces this top board uh, and provides easy access to most of the buttons through uh, easy to access through holes, as you can see right here. <clears throat> it's also easy to add screw terminals to this strip right here uh, for a near solder free solution. The reason why I say near solder free is uh, there are three button buttons on the bottom board of the Xbox One pad the B button here and the left and the right triggers. Uh, because these are only located on the bottom board, uh, you will need to uh, solder some wires to this. Uh, and uh, the only reason why I mention this as a caveat is because the contact points are very, very small. If you can see here, this is where the B button is, right there. Uh, you can see that it's a uh, uh, a really, really, really tiny compared to my finger. The other points are on the back to the left and the right trigger. Those two, that capacitor and that resistor right there is one of them. And on the same side, the other side of the board right there is also one of them. So they are very, very tiny. Uh, so uh, extreme care and caution is required when modding the Xbox One PCB. And it's part of the reason why the crossbone was created in the first place. Uh, make it a lot easier. Um, as I said before, we're going to be going through and showing how to mod this with the uh, PS360 Plus. Now, uh, I already have this modded here, but this 20 pin header normally is not included with the crossbone. It will come in the kit uh, when you purchase it with uh, focusattack.com but uh, it uses the 20 pin header on the crossbone to connect with the 20 pin header on the uh, PS360 Plus board. Um, you'll notice that they're both numbered the exact same. In fact, I'll put up a comparison side by side here. You'll notice they're both numbered the exact same. Uh, so the pins are pinned out the exact same as well, making it a lot easier to uh, to interface with this. Uh, one thing that I will say about the crossbone is that by default, when it's configured, it is set to be the default PCB. So if you uh, have this implemented with a PS360 Plus, you would need to hold down a button of your choosing. Um, I did this previously, I set it up previously, and you'll notice that the HO for home or guide button is filled in uh, you can choose whichever button that you you want but if you plug it in and hold a button down it will uh, default to uh, what's known as system 2 or sys 2 uh, for for our purposes here in the video I'm going to show you how to use the home button to uh, hold to activate uh, whichever one you choose uh, you'll notice that there's an invert pad right here if you bridge that it will make it so the the system two is very first. Uh, so what you do is you wire whatever button you choose up to this switch right there, and when you plug it in, you hold that button down uh, for whatever you want, whatever you decide. If you want the X one to be or the Xbox One pad to be the uh, the default, leave it as is. If you want the PS three sixty plus to be the default, you solder that jumper there and just plug it in. Uh, 
That way, if this is soldered and you plug it into the console, it will default to the uh, PS360 Plus. If you want to use your Xbox One and you have this soldered, you'd have to hold whatever button down you choose. Um, so let's go ahead and go over the things that you're going to need to perform this mod. First off, you're going to need uh, a couple of 3-inch strips of 28-gauge uh, wire. This is very, very thin. Uh, it's small enough that you're not going to be um, pulling contacts off of the Xbox One pack. And you'll need three 3-inch three strips of that. If you buy the kit from Focus Attack, it will come with a 1-foot length of wire or so, give or take. Uh, you're going to need a small piece of 22 gauge wire. Uh, this is to decide whether or not you want to use the, um, uh, which button you, you want to choose. Uh, for the purposes in this video, we're going to choose the home button here. And you'll notice that I've already cut and pre-tinned these. Uh, I did that for the sake of, uh, the sake of time in this video. You're going to need the crossbone. Um, if you buy the kit from Focus Attack, it will come with everything you need. So the, the wire that I just showed you, this ribbon cable that will connect the uh, crossbone and the PS360 Plus, and two sets of these headers. Uh, like I said before, I went through and for the sake of time and already added them to the board. Uh, they're pretty simple if you're familiar with soldering. It's through-hole soldering, so you shouldn't have uh, too much of a pro any problems with it. So, all right. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and begin. What you'll need to do, first off, we're going to start with preparing the, the PCBs. So let's pull out the Xbox One PCB here. Let's see. Oh, additionally... I forgot this, I apologize. You're also going to be receiving a uh, small uh, micro USB uh, connector that goes in here. Uh, and uh, one more thing that you will need is a uh, USB A to USB B cable. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut it, you're going to strip the wires. And you're going to uh, you're going to tin them. So what this will do is it will connect the crossbone with the uh, to the PS360 Plus and the USB B socket. All right. So now on to assembly <clears throat> or preparing. What you're going to want to do is uh, pull out the Xbox One PCB, take the top half off. It's going to take a little bit of effort. It'll just pop off, take the top board, and set it to the side, or do whatever you want with it, because you're not going to need it at all. Um, now, as I said before, you need to be extremely careful, and what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the soldering points. I've already gone through, and you can see this here, but I've scraped off a little bit of this black stuff, and put a little dollop of solder right there. Now you need to be very, very careful that you do not give too much heat to that. Uh, if you do, um, you're going to pull the solder off, you're going to melt it right off the board. Uh, if that happens, you can solder it right there, that tiny little top pin. Let me rotate my screwdriver so it's a better point. This, this part right here, right there, that top one. D14, top one. Uh, that way you can solder it directly to that and you'll be good to go. Do not bridge these two points. These, uh, usually on circuit board terms, D means diode and uh, that I'm, I haven't tested it, but it could cause problems. So just this top point there if you break this. Um, so you're going to put a little dollop of solder right there. You're going to flip over the board and you're going to put a little dollop of solder bridging these two the bottom two points of these, these uh, the resistor and the capacitor right there. And you're gonna do the same thing on this side right here. So, because I haven't done that, I'm gonna do that right now, real quick. It's gonna take a little bit of finesse, but it's actually not that difficult.
Okay, so that's bridged. This next one here, we'll go ahead and bridge it as well. All right, that's bridged as well. So you can see, I'll show you here really quick. There's a big old glob of solder right there. And a big old glob of solder right there. Now, what you'll need to do is you'll take the, the wire that you received from Focus Attack in the kit and solder it very, very carefully to these next two points. Well, actually all three of these points. So it's good to kind of figure out how you want the wire to twist when you solder it to these points right here. So, and that's what we're gonna do. Because the solder should already be there, you should only need to quickly tap it with your soldering iron. So there's one. I'm going to show you a close-up here of how it looks. Let's see. So you can see it's bridged to those two connections. And again, you need to be very, very careful. Um, the next one, I'm going to flip this around, make it just a little bit easier to work with. Grab it from the small end that I cut here. And again, I'm just going to put it up against it and quickly tap it so that there are, it creates mechanical bond. You don't hose anything or burn anything. See that right there. And now for the B button. The B button is going to be the easiest one primarily because the pad is a little bit bigger. You don't have to worry about bridging two connections and yeah. So once again, just grab it. Bring it up a little bit closer so you can see. All right, and there you have it. This has been put together. Um, now, I didn't mention it before, but you're gonna need a glue gun as well. I put a list of things that you need in the, uh, the description. Um, you're also gonna need a glue gun, because we're going to uh, create a little uh, tension relief on these wires. So we're gonna hot glue right before the solder points, right here or so and then I'll show you the other two on the other places. What this hot glue does is it allows the wires uh, a little bit more uh, give on their end. Um, you don't want to put it right on top of the soldering point uh, because it does, uh, number one, it doesn't look good, and two, if you need to pull the uh, hot glue off to perform some repairs, you're probably going to be pulling the contact off as well. So put it right before that. What this does, like I said, is creates a little strain relief so that if the wires get bumped or something, it's not going to pull the contact off. All the, the strain goes right there instead of right here. So while that's cooling, let's do the other two. So what you'll need to do, once again, we'll do this one here. My hot glue gun has been on for a little bit, so it's kind of weeping here. I'm going to put it right before the soldering point. And you want to put it right before the soldering point right there. So, we'll get a couple of tearaways, and that's normal. Like I said, my hot glue gun has been on for a little bit of time, so my apologies. All right, so there you have it. This PCB has been prepped and should be ready to go as soon as this, this uh, glue cools down. So I'm gonna put that just right here. All right, so now moving on to the uh, 
uh, Crossbone and the uh, PS360 Plus PCBs. Uh, this is pretty easy and self-explanatory. You're just going to want to solder this 20-pin connection in on both of them. So this one's done, and uh, you can see this one's done as well. So we'll set those aside because we will need them later on. All right. The hot glue should have cooled down on these. It looks like it has. So now for assembly, put everything together. The crossbone, as you can see, uh, uses these pin headers. Uh, these are not proprietary Microsoft. Microsoft, you actually use their own connection. And uh, Freak, uh, Freakazoid with Freak Mods didn't have this available. So uh, we're, uh, he added these. It's very important that you make sure that the pins are in their sockets all the way uh, before you, you click them in. You'll notice that, let's see, aim it like there so you can see it. So it, it cradles or it goes around that analog joystick and then you'll hear it click. And then the other side, you'll hear it click again. All right, cool. I got everything all connected up there. So now we're gonna want to uh, start connecting these wires. You'll notice that there's connections right here. It says LT and RT and D. You don't wanna play connect the dots. So. We'll go ahead and we'll start with LT first. Now your the tip of the wire should already be tinned, which is good. So what you're gonna wanna do is hit it with the soldering iron just a little bit to create a, a little bit of a bond there and then fill that point in with uh, a little bit of solder. Okay, so that's in there. We're gonna wanna do the same thing with the other ones. So we'll focus on the, um, the B button and do the same thing with that. Get a little bit with the solder so it sticks and then fill the hole in with some solder and it just popped out. That happens sometimes. Like I said, these wires are extremely uh, fragile so they end up breaking, uh, it's okay to strip off a little bit more and uh, and put it in. Alright, so and now finally RT. Might even be beneficial to fill the hole with solder first and then heat it up and push the wire in. All right, there you go. This crossbone is where it needs to be in order to start getting stuff taken care of on it. So this is what we're going to do. All right. We need to prepare uh, this just a little bit more. Once again, I stated about the uh, the home LED and the switch, or the, the home itself and the switch. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in right now. And because I'm going to be using my PS360 Plus uh, primarily on my Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and the legacy consoles it supports, I'm going to be choosing the PS3, or the, the invert switch first. So I'm going to put a little bit of dab of solder on that. And as you can see, those two points are now bridged. Um, quick note, the... Uh, PS360 crossbone setup is not 100% backwards compatible. It will only be backwards compatible with systems that use USB for this purpose, the purposes of this uh, this instruction video. Um, I will be uh, doing another video that shows you how to retain legacy console support like PS1 and 2 and Xbox original and um, uh, What's that other console? Oh, the Dreamcast. What's that other console? It's only my favorite console ever. Um, I'll show. I'll be doing a video to show you how to do that uh, a little bit later. So I'm just adding the wire into the switch spot. So as you can see, it's sticking out there. 
And now from here, I'm going to be doing um, whatever button I choose, and I choose home. So if I hold the home button in with this invert jumper jumped, uh, it's going to uh, uh, bring up the Xbox One controller. All right, so from here, we're just about ready to connect the cross or the crossbone to the uh, PS360 Plus. The only thing that we need to do is we need to um, uh, give it the USB connection. There are a couple of ways that you can do that. Technically, the only thing that needs to be sent to the uh, PS360 Plus is the data plus and data minus connection. So you can actually take the data plus and data minus from Sys2 and wire them up here to data plus and data minus here. Uh, you can also take the JST header and take five, pin 5 for data plus and pin 6 for data minus. Or is it the other way around? So pin 5 is data minus, pin 6 is data plus. And then wire them up to here. Uh, for, the, for the sake of ease, and since this provides a uh, very modular uh, connection, we're going to be using the USB 2 connector. And as you can see, I've already cut up about one foot of wire to, uh, to uh, work with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these wires. I'm going to wire all four, even though you don't need to do ground and uh, power because they're going over these headers. But I'm going to do it anyway, just for the sake of fun. It's not going to hurt anything. So we'll go ahead and put that off to the side. And... Uh, we're going to start from the very top. Black for the USB standard is always ground. So what we're going to do is I'm going to, I might need to hit these with the solder just to clean them up a little bit. All right. So we're going to do 10 your wires. And then solder in the ground. Actually, I'm just going to solder it over the top. You can use the through holes. I'm just going to solder it on top right now. So ground is black. Data plus is always green. I mean, if you mix up data plus and data minus, it's not going to hurt anything. You just won't be able to use it. So. I'm gonna hit this with the soldering iron real quick. Alright, data minus is yellow. And VCC or voltage is red. So we'll hit that right here. So as you can see, you have all of these all wired up, ready to go. Um, so now, all that's left is to connect the uh, PS360 Plus and the crossbone. So what you do, you make it so the red wire is on the left. It's very important to make it on the left because if you decide to uh, flip flop, you get a twisted cord or whatnot, whatever. So. Plus, the power goes over pins nine and 19 and 20. Uh, so it's good to kind of line it up with where the power is at. So press it down. It's going to take a little bit of effort to get on. And once it's on, it'll pretty much stay there. And then you connect this end here. Making sure that all the pins are covered. And then you take the USB cable and plug it in right here. And there you have it. Grab your micro USB cable that comes with the kit, plug it in here, and then plug the other end into your uh, new trick pass-through if you have one. And uh, there you have it. A fully functional PS360 Plus crossbone setup. Um, there are a couple of things that I do want to talk to you about before concluding the video. 
Um, the, the system, like I said, is not auto-detecting at all. Uh, we went over how to uh, uh, set it up so that you can detect it at a key press or a button press at plug-in. Um, and we talked about how you can um, choose to invert that so that the PS360 is uh, first instead of the uh, crossbone and Xbox One controller. Uh, you may notice that the thumbsticks are still on the bottom board uh, of the Xbox One PCB. It's possible to remove them and then use uh, 10K ohm resistors to cancel out the analog uh, potentiometers there. Um, since the PCB is really sensitive, I suggest against it. You're not going to be saving too much space, especially if you notice that this ribbon cable pokes up just as far as the... Uh, um, the, the joysticks. Uh, the best way to work with this is to use your hot glue gun to glue the inside of this uh, so that the, the joysticks can't move after you install it into your joystick. Um, so modding this way, once again, I talked about it previously, modding this way with USB will only provide support to consoles that use USB. So uh, Xbox One, of course, uh, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and if you have an adapter, the original Xbox, since it's uh, USB standard as well, just has a different connector. Um, this excludes uh, Dreamcast and PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 um, support. There is a way around that, and uh, a future video will show you how to do that as well so that you can have your cake and eat it too. Um, Anyway, uh, I think that's it. Uh, once again, uh, this is Lemony Vengeance, uh, showing you how to make yourself a, a, a crossbone mod. Uh, this video was brought to you in part by uh, Freak Mods and FocusAttack.com. Um, if you guys have an opportunity to, uh, to check me out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Lemony Vengeance. Also, uh, check me out on my YouTube channel, see if there's any other videos that you like. And uh, for all your, your parts and uh, modding needs, focusattack.com is your place. They'll take care of you. Thank you very much.